Hi everybody, welcome to my attic studio. My name is Brandy Beckett and today I'll be teaching you a really simple monotype printmaking technique that anyone can do. It's for all ages, all levels of ability, and using very simple materials. So I hope that everyone can find a way to participate. Before we start, I want to really quickly thank the sponsors of this video is that Penticton and District Community Arts Council, Province of BC, Canada Helps, Gore Mutual, and our generous community donors. First I'll be going over the materials that you'll likely need and try and keep it really simple here. So you'll need some water. Very simple. Um, you, if you have like ink, different inks or watercolor paints, anything like that would work as long as it's water-based. If you don't have any paint, here's a really strong brew of tea. So we'll experiment a little with using tea. You can use coffee too. Either one would work. Uh, you'll need a brush of some kind. This is not fancy. It's like a dollar. Use whatever you have. Uh, some kind of container to mix up your paints in, like a palette, even a plate or a bowl will do. I use this ice cube tray. You'll need some kind of paper. Uh, watercolor paper is nice because then it doesn't buckle, but if you don't have that, don't worry. This is just a cardstock paper. The thicker the better, I guess. And then I've got some really thin rice paper here, which also works just fine. And then you'll also need some kind of non-absorbent surface. Right here I have something to print on. This is a printing plate uh, for printmaking. Uh, but if you don't have that, that's fine. And most of us wouldn't just have that lying around the home. Anything that's not absorbent. You can get some really cool effects with just a plastic bag. Uh, this one here that I did, this cool kind of splattery effect that was just using a plastic bag. So you don't need to buy fancy stuff. You might wanna forage for things in your house that you could use to print. Like I'm gonna use this leaf that fell off of one of my house plants because I feel like that might make a cool impression on the paper. But whatever you find, uh, like jar rings are kind of fun to make circles, anything that you have on hand. I'm just going to say a few words about what monotype is. It's basically a one-of-a-kind printmaking technique, and the way we're going to be doing it, you can get a bunch of different effects. Uh, and these are some examples. So this was made with a plastic bag to get the color, the abstract pattern in the background, and then I just drew over top of it the bamboo. Uh, this one also was made with uh, just a watercolor abstract in the background. And then I drew this Chinese style landscape over top. Uh, this one is also a landscape that I painted over top of the monotype. Here's an example of, of kind of like ignoring the, the rules of like what type of paper to use and stuff like that. You can see it's a little bit crinkly, but I still think it's awesome. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. I just have a piece of paper here and my non-absorbent surface. I'm going to show you how to use the bag because everybody has a bag at home. Let's try starting with a little bit of tea. The tea is going to be super watery compared to a paint, so uh, it'll spread out a lot. This is just a crappy cheap brush. <laughs> and just kind of put put your paint or tea or whatever on the plastic. Okay. And I've never used this glossy paper, so we'll see what happens. And then you just press it on, mash it a little with your hand. Oh, it's really soaking into the paper. And then you lift it up. Ooh, that's cool. This iridescent paper looks really good with tea on it. So that's a really cool start.
Now what you can do from here is maybe you want to mix it up and add a few other colors. I recommend testing the colors side by side on a piece of scrap paper to make sure you like the way they look together. So ours was just tea, the first color. So there, now I'll know what the tea looks like. And then let's try this fuchsite green. Put a little in my ice cube tray. Mix it with water. For this technique, you want your paints to be pretty runny. Runny is better because then you get cool, unpredictable effects. If the paint is too thick, then when you lift it up, it'll leave little peaks of paint sticking up, which is cool if, if that's what you're into. I don't really like it that much. So I'm testing the two colors next to each other. I think that's pretty cool. They're still not dry, so if you are really concerned, you can let them dry before you make your decision. But I have a pretty good idea of what these guys look like. So back onto our plastic bag. And because they're, it's still a little bit damp, let's see what happens. Do the colors mix or do they kind of keep to themselves. Oh, yeah, see, it's a little bit thick, actually. So it didn't absorb that well, but I still, I still like the effect. I just want more. And remember, if you're deciding like, oh, I want more in, say this corner, when you, when you print it, everything will be reversed. So if you put paint on this side of the printing plate, in this case our bag, then it'll show up on this side of the painting. So just keep that in mind. Cool, even more. Now you might be tempted to go in and be like, oh, well, I'll just paint. I want more, I'm just gonna paint it on there. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but be aware that it won't look the same. You won't have the same effect. You'll probably be able to tell which parts are painted on versus which parts are made with the pressing method. You can even kind of do little parts at a time, going back in to pick up the leftovers. There, I'm just going to leave that. I like the way it looks, and we'll see how it is once it dries. Um, this iridescent paper ended up being really cool with the tea, so now that I've tried that, I'll definitely do that again in the future. So now that we've done that, we're going to let that dry. Uh, here's something that I made with tea earlier that's fully dry now. So we can go in and do something else over top. And now I want to show you how to use something like this leaf or whatever you have around to print on top. Now you don't really need plastic, but it kind of keeps everything a little bit cleaner. And we're going to do... I think a nice indigo would be good, together with the color of this tea. I'll mix some up and we'll test it out and see what we think. That's pretty dark. I need to dilute it a bit. You can, if you really need to add a lot of water, you can also use a little eyedropper. But I think I've got it now. Yeah. So I'm going to choose the back side of the leaf because it has uh, more raised 
lines, and I think that that'll create a cool effect on the paper. See how the leaf does not absorb the paint at all? That's something to keep in mind, is that it's not going to be perfectly even coat when you're using water-based media on top of the leaf like this. But that's okay, that's kind of the beauty of it, is it's really unpredictable. So just try to get paint on all the parts. I like to get the edges as well. Remember, I don't know what this is going to look like. So instead of pressing, I could press the paper on, but because there's all this blue around the edge, I'm going to take the leaf and press it onto the paper like that. And then you got to be a little bit more careful with pressing this guy so you don't tear it. And it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay, because that's kind of what we're going for. Something a little bit imperfect. Now let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's interesting. Kind of abstract. <laughs> Does not look like a leaf. Now what if I use this leaf outline over that? It might give us more of a leaf look. Doing it this way gives you a chance to see the paint smooshing around on the paper. Like you didn't get to see it before. There we go. Still doesn't really look like a leaf, but sometimes things are pretty unpredictable. Let's try one more time, see what happens. I like that. It doesn't need to look exactly like a leaf because A, you don't have to make this into a leaf, but B, if you want to, you can go over top and draw in uh, some parts of the leaf to show what it is. Okay, now we've let this um, leaf print dry. So it's pretty much totally dry now. And we're gonna do a bit of drawing over top. So you can totally ignore the marks and just use them as an abstract background, like this guy. But here I want to draw on top to try to bring out some of the um, parts of this leaf. Uh, I like to draw with a brush and ink, but I mean you can use a pencil or a pen, whatever you want. You could. If you're a painter, you could use this as the first layer and paint over top. It's really up to you. This is my favorite brush. And here I just have some Chinese ink. I, I don't like to do too much of an underdrawing or any at all sometimes, because I like it to be a little bit natural. Okay. So I've got my little leaf for reference here. And I'm not going to totally draw every little detail. I'm just drawing a bit of the leaf. And you'll want to be careful not to put your hand in the ink. If you do much drawing, you've, I'm sure you've learned that lesson the hard way. I'm making an effort to be really loose and spontaneous here because that's the way I like to draw. But you can do whatever you want. You can do a very detailed pencil sketch and then go over top it if you like to. So I'm doing a bit of a broken outline. 
of belief. So here I just have the outline and then I'm going to draw a few of the veins. I'm trying to keep it loose. It's hard sometimes. I'm going a little bit faster than I normally do just because you're watching me. <laughs> um, but take your time, you know, there's no rush. You can use the the, the paint on the background to guide you as much as you want to. Like, I used the blue as kind of a loose outline. I mean, I have the leaf in front of me, but if I wasn't drawing this leaf, if I was drawing something else on here, you can uh, try to line up your lines with the edge of your paint color, but you don't have to. That's just an optional way to try it. That's what I did on this one. So when I'm looking for the shapes to make the rock formations, I'm going up where the edge of the color is. So that's how I do that is, is I look at the marks, like see how this purple and white here, I could have made some kind of rock formation right there out of that. I don't want to force you to watch me draw this leaf for an hour. Um, but here's a good start, at least, on the leaf, and I think it's pretty cute. I really like that indigo color together with the tea. So remember, you don't need a lot of fancy supplies. This was done with one color of paint and tea and some ink. Um, we used a plastic bag to print with. It's really easy. So just keep that in mind. You can really make this whatever you want it to be. Now that um, I've had a bit of time to spend on these, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I've done. So I obviously I drew in ink a little bit and then I also I had some extra of that indigo paint. So I darkened some of the areas, adding a little bit of shadow and just painting on it a little bit, just like you normally would with any watercolor paint. I might spend a little more time on this, but I think it's done enough that you have a bit of an example of, of how it works and what it might look like in the end. Uh, and I've also taken this one, the kind of oddly iridescent one, and started doing a Chinese style landscape on top. So I've kind of outlined some land forms and I'm adding in a few trees and waterfalls and stuff. This one's not done, but uh, I think it's, again, enough that you get the drift. And you can spend as long or as short of a time as you want on these drawings. This is a just a tool that you can use in any way you want to. That's the end. Thanks everybody for joining me. Um, I hope that you get some value from using this really simple and easy technique. It's a really good way to get over the fear of the blank page. Sometimes just a white page is rather intimidating to start with. So you just get a few marks on there and then you have a jumping off point for whatever creative projects you want.